Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of No Man's Sky, and I'm your host, Alon Paul. Uh, we're going to do a continuation of our last gameplay, uh, but before we get started, you can see I'm at the starting screen right now, I wanted to pause for just a moment. Uh, I want to bring up a couple quick things. Number one, um, I want to actually do something different today. I want to dedicate this particular video to one of a fellow, uh, one of our fellow gamers by the, who goes by the gamer tag, Survival Bob. Um, Bob, as he goes by, is currently going through a rough time. He had to put his mother into hospice not too long ago, uh, several months ago, and uh, he's taking time off now because uh, uh, even by the time this video is released, there's a possibility she may she may have passed. So we want to keep him in our hearts and minds. We want to thank Survival Bob for all he's done for the community, and uh, you know, take as much time as you need, buddy. We appreciate everything you've done, and we. We're, we're there for you. We, we get what you're going through and we understand and we'll keep you in our hearts and minds and our prayers. Um, been kind of a tough week on this side, uh, nowhere near what he might be going through. Uh, I've got two kids down with the flu. Uh, they have to, have, of course, have different variants. One has flu A, one has flu B, but they're doing pretty well now. My wife's just getting over it and at the same time I end up going to go in for dental surgery. So if my voice sounds a little bit strange, that's probably why. Um, still getting over the effects of that uh, surgery, but I'm doing a lot better now, and uh, hopefully be back to some semblance of normality starting in next uh, starting next week. So we're going to get started here. We're going to pick up where we left off, um, and that was with our last gameplay. We're going through a normal run through, and as you can see, it says here recorded playthrough. Um, this is. Uh, on our last run would have been on about a week or so ago so it would have been last Saturday and that would have been the 29th and I haven't picked that game up since so as you can see it says recorded playthrough so we're gonna pick up on Planet Bob uh, the planet I renamed. And again, we're going to pick up in such a way that we're going to do a lot of description along the way. We're going to try to get to another uh, milestone, I guess we'll call it, uh, in the gameplay. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be as we go, and I'll probably pick it out, but we're only going to go for about a half hour today. Uh, I want to keep it limited. I don't want to make these episodes too, too long. So we'll go with that, and I'm going to do a lot of description of the things around us. This is more intended to help folks who are new to the game. There's a lot of different people out there doing this. Jason Plays comes to mind. Again, Survival Bob was another Zane's World. Um, they've all done wonderful episodes describing how to go about playing the game and what you can do to achieve certain achievements. They describe the things around you. But sometimes hearing it from a different point of view and a different voice, it might be beneficial. So, uh, by all means, there'll be the comments section down below. Leave your favorite comments down there. Uh, feel free to throw some criticisms in there. Be kind, please, by all means. I'm fairly new, fairly new at this. Not at playing the game, but at telling you how things go. Um, if there's anything wrong with the audio, the video, anything along those lines, let me know. Um, and, of course, you know, really appreciate if you could throw a like in there. It really would uh, look, that, that helps me and helps out the community as well. So, here we are. So as you can see, our toxic protection's fallen. We talked about looking around at the things around me. We've gotten everything as far as in regards to the discoveries for the planet, um, except for two creatures, which we know for a fact are underground. And we're going to look for them later. Again, that'll affect our nanite score, because if I can find them all, that's 1,750 extra nanites. So it's kind of a good habit to get into, especially if you can land on a planet that you know you can find them all pretty easily. Go ahead and do it. But I guarantee you, like I said before, we're going to find one underground pretty quick, the other one, it's going to be a pain in the butt, and we'll have to stick around a while in order to find it. But still, who knows how that goes. Um, I'm not so worried about minerals and flora, because even finding everything that you could possibly can on a planet isn't going to get you anything. But it helps to build up some units as you go. The, the credits are units that you can get up. So, anyway, let's continue on where we left off. So we got some credits. We need to look around. Our next task, let's go back to the menu, is in our log. Um, it's telling us that we need to leave the planet and seek answers out there. So we're going to go ahead and do that here in just a second. I want to take a quick look around and I'm going to show you some things. Uh, we are going to come back to this planet at some point because I do want to find the rest of the creatures here and I'm already five in. So you're going to see certain things like 
these diamond shaped uh, objects that you have in the distance are always going to be different deposits. You have cobalt, this planet is known for it. Uh, you have cobalt, you have, let's see, there should be a few others floating around on here, an ammonia deposit on this planet, and usually there can be one more beyond that. More cobalt. Uh, I'm not seeing any at the moment, so let's uh, not look for that. You're going to find buried technology. This is very handy as you go along. A, it's worth a lot of credits. By all means, pick up those units when you can. They're pretty easy to find. As you can see, this is only 123 units away. So I think I already picked up the one that was over here earlier. Yeah, I can see that it's already gone. So I'm going to take a run at that real fast, and we'll grab it. Um, but what we can do is, while we're in this menu, if you want to make sure you find it properly, you and on the keyboard, mind you, this is on PC, uh, you just hold down your E button, as it says, to tag it. And what does that do? It makes it appear on your display at all times so you can find it. Oop, let's get over this. There we go. Can't go far with these, but those little bursts will get you where you need to go. Now I'm going to switch over. Do I have my terrain manipulator at this point? I don't even have a terrain manipulator yet. I lost track of that. So doing this is going to be superfluous. Uh, we'll get up there. It'll be useless to us whatsoever. No, no use in even trying. Let's go ahead and continue on with the storyline. We'll come back to this in a little while. And let's get in our ship. So, all systems functional. We're going to seek answers among the stars. We're going to take off. And we're going to do exactly that. Now watch your bottom right corner as we blast into space here. Achievement. Hey, you discovered the system. So this is a brand new system no one else has been to except me. Test your starship systems, a zero of three. Test flight controls. Now, right now, I'm holding the W down. It's not registering because I'm not far enough away from the planet. It takes a couple moments. But once it detects that achievement, it will register. There it goes. Now it says to test your boost system. That's my left shift key. And now we just did that. It's going to register. And finally, it's going to give the pulse engine. And I don't want to go too far away. So I'm going to stay close to the atmosphere over here. Uh, I just love this absolutely love it the way they depict the planets you can see the atmosphere beautiful anyway I'm gonna do the pulse engine we hold down the space bar and we have tested our pulse engine all orbits all systems are complete wait a couple extra moments and here's the next section we've got a communication coming in incoming transmission source 4925 B please identify yourself I'm and who knows what he said. Your choice. Now it really doesn't affect the storyline which you choose, but I always choose the positive things on this, so I'm going to identify myself. It's the right thing to do. You are not, what? Alone. Follow the... And it ends as strangely as it begins. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. So I'm going to input those coordinates, and it's going to give me that selection. Okay, now we're going to follow it. And if you look, you start flying, you see we got that red icon. And there it is. And that's where it's taking us, the signal source. Now if I travel like this, it's going to take us a couple weeks to get there. I increase my speed, now we're down to four hours. Now is that four real hours? Yes, it is. It would literally take me four hours of going at this speed to reach there. What about my rocket engines? I've reduced it to about 33 minutes. But you know what? If you keep yourself focused on it, you hold down your pulse engine, it will lock onto that signal, and now it's going to take me 45 seconds to get there. And it happens to be on another planet. Now it says it's unknown, undiscovered, but if I hit the C button to scan it, I now know it's a high temperature planet that the current objects on this planet. One, first of all, one of the plants you'll find here is selenium. And then three of the resources on it are copper, phosphorus, and sodium. Now I can tell you that if it's high temperature, that means it's going to be obviously a very hot planet. We don't have protection for that, so we're going to go through the same thing that we did on the last planet. The difference is this planet also has water on it. 
that means in the oceans there's going to be more creatures to find, which means I'm going to guess that there's probably nine creatures. Let's see if I'm right. When we land on the planet, we'll find out. Now, it says it's an approximate location, as you can see by the signal source. That means wherever I'm headed, it's going to be nearby there. Now, I like to head straight down, get to a further level with my rockets, slow down, level out so it's in front of me, and then hit my scan button. And I look for any house icons to appear, some of those home icons. That can tell me that there's something nearby. Now, I don't quite remember what I'm looking for here. I don't know if it's just a crash site or okay now it's going to tell me to land see oh, oh, there's something there I don't think that's it because that looks like it might be too far away let's see oh, that might have been it right below me well, let's find out hmm you know what it's got a landing grid right there the green circles that'll save you from using your launch fuel so I'm gonna go ahead and use it now the second good thing about this place once we land I'll show you okay and exit and as you can see it's telling me I'm brand new on the first contact the weather is sweltering the sentinels are absent the floor is abundant and the fauna is full this is a transmission tower so I'm not sure if I don't remember if this one is one of the ones that reach out into space or it's localized to the planet if it's localized to the planet that means we might be able to find a crashed ship which means money that's right but while we're here let's get resources while we can always go for the damaged machinery I'm gonna get rid of the goop boatcaster module wasn't that interesting do I have a boat caster yet? I do not. Can I build one? I don't know what it will take. Chromatic metal and carbon nanotubes. I'm not going to, but it's nice to have that. So I'm going to hang on to it. I may use it later. I'm not sure yet. Let me put this on the starship. I don't need it here. Sorry. I'm going to move some things around here because they're just annoying me. Carbon together. Uranium. Oh, interesting. It's more cobalt. Alright, we'll leave it like that for now. Let's go into each one of these habitats because they'll have things for me, usually. Or not. This one seems to be curiously vacant. Like the first one we visited on the other planet. But we can get some nanites out of here. At least that's something. Doesn't look like there's anything else. I know I don't feel like sitting down right now. Uh, how many creatures did we say we might find here? I said probably nine so I'm gonna go ahead and get this biological creature it's one and how many does it say 14 all right I was way off but you know what Wow is all I can say because you know what that's gonna do this makes this a way more valuable planet and it looks like I have just found what five of them six Five. Five of the 14 species so far. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. Okay. That's six, seven. That's one 200 blocks away over there. I'm going to call it clicks. Just because. Let's go take a look. Doesn't look like anything's attacking us just yet. He's over there. Ooh, big boy. He just likes plant roots. We're good. So that's eight I found so far. So I only need to find six more. And it looks like I just found some more. That's going to be the same one for that one, too, I'm guessing. Yep. That's nine. Good gravy. Okay. Yeah, I said gravy. Sorry, I'm trying to keep this on the up and up. Okay. Like I have always said, it's a better way to speak if you don't have to cuss, you know? There's no reason to. Well, let's go in and find out what this place is. Uh, is there anything to find here? Oh, well, nice. Okay. Get some nanites. 
I guess about 50 or so. Yeah, 46, not bad. Doesn't look like there's anything else over here. But here's where the relay tower is. So let's see what this is. Transmission tower. It's always a puzzle. Automated distress call when it went unanswered. So either it's a crashed ship, which you get more often than not, or it's a crashed freighter, which is a little less often. So we have to crack the code. The code is always, usually, some kind of mathematical sequence. So 1, 2, 6, 24, 120. And for any geeks or nerds out there who are mathematically equivalent to doing these kind of things, let's see. So I'm trying to remember the sequence for this. I know what the answer is because I've, I've seen this one multiple times. But it's uh, 1 times 2 is 2 times 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. So you see the sequence is 2, 3, 4. 24 times 5 is 120, so it's 120 times 6, which is not 620. It's 720. So your distress coordinates are discovered. So we zoom out. Now this does not appear to be the place I was supposed to be going, so we're going to have to go back and look for that. But we'll come back to that in just a moment. And now we have a distress signal, so we can find the crashed ship when we're done here. And if we walk there, it takes 12 hours. Yeah, we won't be walking, don't worry. Um, this, by the way, when you find them are first aid kits. If your hearts have dropped in any way, taking one of those will get your health back to maximum. Mine was already so. And what will happen is later on that will regenerate. Not right away, but later. Take another close look around. Looks like we have another biological creature. Now, there's a tunnel system here, or cave system, I should say. So, species number 10 was in the cave system. I'm going to guess there's one more species in the cave and three more in the water. Let's see what it says. So, there's them. Now, if I hit the S button, I'll go to the next section. Underwater, 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 and underground, as you can see. Okay. Let's get back out of here. Now, since this is a cave system, I'll take a look around. Maybe we'll get fortunate and the other underground creature will just show up. Now, you see it's telling me where my target is. I'm now getting close enough that it's actually activated my target looking. But I can... Oh, my gosh, you're kidding me. I found the other underground creature right here. Well, that's 11, so the other three are in the ocean. So hopefully they won't be too hard to find. Now, we have to find the target sweep, so it's that way, about 1,500 meters. Let's go ahead and head that direction. It may not be perfect, but it should be okay. Oof. Boy, they just tell you the way they've created the surfaces here. Here's a surface glitch. Eh, it went away. Okay. A little graphical glitch there. But the way they create these things. I'll go ahead and pick these up. Be them to get me what I need. <laughs> the echo effect while you're walking through a cave. It's like they thought of everything. Anyway. So again, I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit weird. Heavy doses of antibiotics. My left side of my face is ever so slightly still swollen. get these while I'm here. They're just right out here in the open and I don't see any sentinels arguing with me right now about taking them. So, Got it. Okay. So supposedly it's out that way, about 12,000 clicks. 12, pardon me, 1,200 clicks. 12,000. Again, my, like I said, I think it's going to be more like a crash site. So, if I remember correctly, a piece of machinery you have to get. Now, there's nothing wrong with the ship I've got. I want to be clear about this. The ship that I might get from the crash site might be better, might be worse. Maybe I won't even like it. But it's worth something. 
In a normal mode, you're going to get much better um, value out of it than you would, say, in permadeath, like I did in my very first episode. So it is actually worth my time looking into it. Wow, there's a lot of carbon over here. At least I think there is. I think I'm hitting something else. Alright, yeah, that's good. Where are we? Thousand clicks. You know what? Let's take that. A little bit of a boost. Kind of handy. I gotta be careful. He just put his thing away, so that means our jetpack is gonna die out right there. That got us about an extra 300, so we're gonna head that direction now. Now it's not always exact. It can throw you off occasionally a little bit. So you gotta be careful on where you're going. Keep checking from time to time. Ah, silhouette of a planet out there. That's really cool. Uh, let's see, 625, so still, see it jumps around. Still that direction. Ah, crap. Yeah, knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Kind of hard to see the elements here, these plants, because of the heavily red ground that we've got going on, and a little bit of redness around the screen from the heat. 550. I'll grab this stuff while I can because on the hunch that I may or may not need it later on. Yeah, let's go this way. At least some supplies over here. I'll just take that one for now. Yay, ammunition. I don't even have a gun, but I've got ammunition for it. This way. Ow. It's okay, he can run with a broke ankle. Oh, I'm getting to night time. Excuse me, sorry. Coming through. Still about 500. I try to get it so it does that, and then try to go to the middle. So I'm guessing around this direction. That was weird. Now we have navigation data on me, so I can call my ship to me if I wish. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my light. Just because this planet is unusually dark. 355. Now we're getting a little more accuracy. The closer we get. Alright, let's see what we can charge it with. I think we've got enough oxygen. What do you think? Let's recharge our mining beam. I'm going to use condensed. And we're going to charge our hazard protection now. Let's use one of our batteries. It's over that way. Let's go ahead and check out the damaged machinery while we're here, though. And again, just playing this by yourself, it's kind of cool to have... Um, the background music and stuff going on. Ah, see there? It's like a little miniature crash site down there. Ow! I swear the guy just bit my feet off. And you see the icon reset. There's my signal source right there. Now there was a machine up there we can check out later on if we wish. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to get another navigation data. We'll get some more nanites. So it's a good idea to go ahead and take these while we can. Now believe it or not, we've already been recording for about 25 minutes. I'll probably go about 10 more minutes or so, and then we'll call it. Maybe I'll go a little longer. We'll see.
I'm going to decipher the signal. Decoding 16, 16, 16. No fuel and failed to reach station. Hazard protection, though. No choice but to underground. Deploy base computer. What this means is we're going to get some things out of this. I'm going to get a base computer and a terrain manip manipulator. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about over is leaving these messages. Extract plans. Base computer. Requires 30 chromatic, and we get a terrain manipulator. Finally. Return. Let's build that terrain manipulator immediately. So first we're going to put it in here, and I'll show you what we need to do. So I'm going to just put it right here. I need two carbon nanotubes and a dihydrogen jelly. And as you know, I've already got a dihydrogen jelly on me, so I'll go ahead and take it, but i got to make two carbon nanotubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our exosuit. We're going to go to one of our inventory slots down here in our cargo, and we can create all kinds of products. We're going to go ahead and create two carbon nanotubes. One, we have just enough carbon to do the other one. There's two. Back to the multi-tool, and now we can finish the installation. Our unit is now complete. Now it's going to get us two different things. Now we can start digging up those uh, underground uh, pieces and parts that I was talking about. There we go. Like that one right there, the buried technology modules. Now, when you're using your terrain manipulator, you've got three settings. Okay? You've got when it always defaults to medium, and that's the kind of hole it makes, about that big. These holes are handy to be able to get through something. Okay. You can make them bigger if you really want to make a larger hole. Let me show you what the larger one looks like. Okay. Much larger than this one, as you can see. Or you can go really small which you're not going to walk through. Okay? But is excellent for mining minerals. So if you want to gather copper, like it's telling you at the bottom right, and we look around and we look for copper, uh, let's see, is that some? That's phosphorus, a lot of stuff around here. Here's copper. So if we go to mine, mining uh, copper, we're going to want to use the smallest setting. Sodium, sodium, sodium. Always look for something close if you can. Good gravy. There's a lot of stuff around here. Copper. Copper. 81. Yeah, we'll take that one in just a moment. So, before we do that, we know that we have this. Let's go ahead and grab it. I always set it to a medium setting. R and T is what adjusts that for you. R makes it smaller, T makes it bigger. And there it is. Get close enough, you pick it up, and then it tells you what you picked up. Salvage data one, two. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're usually only going to pick up two at a time. Later on, it starts giving you the bonuses, so you can get three and four at a time. So, that's pretty cool. So, we've gathered what we could from this location. Now, a couple different things. Let's get the copper, because, well, we need it. That's for our next part of our mission. We want to make our base computer, and we got to make um, chromatic metal. The only way to do so is with certain other elements in a refinery. Um, where'd it go? Did I pass it? Hello? I'm going blind, apparently. Or did I stand right on top of it? I'll turn off the light and I'll take another look. Copper, thousand. It says there's a copper deposit right here. Let's take another look. Maybe I just walked right past it. This? No way. Um, it's got some copper in it. Let's make that small. It looks like it is a very ugly little deposit. And we're not getting a whole lot of copper out of it. So, I don't think we're going to stay here. Let's go find another one. Copper at a thousand. Wow. There was that one that we had at 500. That may be where we have to go. There's one at 300. Let's go head that direction. So, uh, one of the great things about this game, again, is that the you have this, this exploration bonus that you're getting to do. You get to wander around a landscape and explore 
crazy looking planets and they could be dangerous planets they could have creatures that are attacking me fortunately I'm not on a planet like that but those yellow ones are pretty good they sometimes give you something neat occasionally they give you nothing oh my gosh you're kidding me what are the chances far 172 looks like we had another piece of machinery over here and some more buried technology photon cannon okay I guess I can add that to my ship at the very least we can sell it more technology. We should get two more. Salvage data. I'm going to make my... Let's see what we get. Now you see what happens is you try to stick to this. Oops. Here, let me just do something real quick. There we go. Get my light going. It looks like it's coming up on daylight anyway. So you try to stick to just gathering up the copper the whole time and you'll get a running balance at the top corner of how much you're gathering now it said we needed 60 chromatic metal well we need 60 chromatic metal to make 30 uh, pardon me 60 copper to make 30 chromatic metal so there's a two to one ratio on that one other metals will get you better yields some are one to one some are one to two so you'll keep an eye out for those metals later on in the game but copper is a pretty decent resource on this planet. It seems to be easily gathered. You notice my uh, thermal protection is falling to a drastic level here, so we're going to recharge it real fast. There we go. And then we'll keep gathering. I want to gather up quite a bit of this because you'll actually need a lot more chromatic metal than you think. Yes, you'll need only 30 for your base computer to build it, but you're going to need a lot more for other elements. I might have grabbed, yep, yeah, silicon powder. That silicon powder is very handy. If you notice, my manipulator is down to 20 just about now. When I get to about 15, the one element that you gather large amounts of when you go into the largest mode is the powder the silicate powder and silicate powder is used you use that you can use ferrite dust too but you can use this to recharge your um, terrain manipulator at a much greater rate so I run it down to nothing depleted recharged the terrain manipulation I can use ferrite dust but I've got 500 of this and it's much cheaper and I use ferrite dust for other things manipulator back to the smallest setting let's pick it all up so I'm gonna keep gathering this right now this is kind of boring uh, to get through this and what I'll do is I'll hold pause the video here and I'll come back to it after we will edit the video so we get rid of this uh, boring portion and we'll come back Okay, we're back. Well, that was quite a deposit. I don't think I've ever ran into one that gave me almost 1,600 copper. So this is huge. Normally a deposit like that is about five, 600. Sometimes you run into ones that are closer to eight to 1,000. This was a huge deposit. I ended up carving out into a cave. As you can see, I didn't even gather it all. There's still some down there. Good gravy. It was incredible how much copper I got out of this. So that'll get me over the 1,600 mark, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, look at that. Good grief. Whoop, whoop. That almost fell. There we go. All right, so we're done with that. Now, what it wants us to do next is it wants us to create a base, right? You've got to make the chromatic metal, and then it's going to ask us to create a base. I'm not ready for that yet. So we're going to summon my vehicle, okay? 
and we're going to do a couple quick things, and then we're going to call it after we create our base. We're going to get up to the point of creating the base, and then we're going to stop. So we're into our ship. We're going to use some of our launch fuel. You'll see our launch thruster is now at zero. So we're going to look to recharge it. Now I do have one of these, so I'm going to use that first before I use my uranium. And we'll go from there. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this crashed ship. Okay, 38 minutes, a little too long for me. Let's get into space. And just like we did for the other items that we look for while we're in space, we'll lock onto it. Pulse engine. And... We'll get over there a little bit quicker this way. The atmosphere slows us down a little bit, so that's why the time starts climbing for a few moments there. It's like they take everything into consideration, isn't it? Kind of like that. Okay, you notice it doesn't say approximate. It is literally pinpointing the exact location you're going to find this ship. So let's see what kind of ship we uh, end up with here. It looks like a fighter. How interesting. What kind of class fighter that one is. I think I almost landed right on top of them. Yeah, just about. Towering Voyage. Huh? That's a nice looking little ship. Not really my style, but... Let's see what it has to say. Here's the distress beacon. Cockpit is adorned with the trophies of dead creatures perched on every available sur surface. At the control sits a tendril hunter, its body and face lacerated. The dank smell of blood assails my nostrils as I fight back the nausea. The black box reveals the pilot was attacked by something whilst in flight, but it's unclear what. I could strengthen the warning beacon in the cockpit, but it would leave me vulnerable to attack. So do I search the ship for signs of life, or do I send out a warning signal? I'm going to send out the warning signal, and I'll show you why. Now, I might get attacked, but it'll end me. it'll give me something in the end. Unknown benefactor sends a reward for my actions. I can now construct a tech that was once po that once powered this stranded craft. It'll probably give me the uh, a teleportation module. There it is, teleport receiver that you can install on one of your ships. And you notice I didn't get attacked, so we're good. So let's gather some things from around here. Of course, damaged machinery. Come on, there we go. I got some nanites. Okay, we'll check the yellow thing. Condensed carbon. Now this, we can open one day if we get an Atlas Pass, and we'll show you them later on in the game. Let's gather up these. Damage container, I'm not going to take the rusted metal this time. Okay. A Gek Relic. So let's see in our inventory where we're at with this. Let's see, what does my starship have? I'm not going to sell it because I know I'm going to get some nanites later on. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to this because right now my damage potential is only 1700. And you know you're going to get attacked sooner or later. So let's go ahead and just add it in. And it adds on to this and it actually enhances it. You see the glow around it. If I put it somewhere else, they don't glow. While it's adjacent to it, directly connected to it, it will enhance this more. So you see it's at 2131 right now. And now I'm at 1834, so it was actually better putting it right next to it. Sometimes we put it in a different position. 2131. 2131, so it didn't make a difference. So we'll put that down there for now. That gives us what we need. Okay, so we'll use that. I just want to show you how that worked. So, and it's explaining upgrade modules to us, so you can go through that when you're playing the game. But now we can actually take this ship if we wish. So if we walk up to it, we select it like anything else. So let's see what we got. We got kind of a damaged ship here. Now, see, the great thing about this is I would love to have this ship. I really would. It's a C class, it's not great, but you have to repair so much, and it requires so many different minerals and materials. This early in the game, it's just not worth trying to repair all these things. So, the only thing you want to do is repair these two, and then we can sell the ship. 
Okay, so we're going to compare it. We'll claim it because the value of the new ship it says 6.7. We could probably get a million or two for it. So I'll claim it. I will make that because that will fix this. I need to make a hermetic seal, so let's make that. I have enough condensed carbon to, uh, carbon to do that. And then we need to replace this. So we have one more dihydrogen jelly. We need pure ferrite of 50. So we have to put down our portable refiner. There we go. Uh, what do we need? Pure. So need 50. We'll get that going. Well, let's go ahead and repair the dihydrogen because I did I do that already? There it goes. Okay. All right, and it's already done. We pick it up, we get everything, we get the carbon, and we get the pure ferrite, as you can see, along with the regular ferrite that we had put in there. So something to remember that you can do. And damage repaired. You'll see that all the everything went away. Now we could repair the shields if we wanted to. We'll have to make more chromatic, but you know what? I don't care. So since there's no other salvageable materials, everything in here needs repairing in order to work. I'm not going to bother with anything else. How do we get rid of it? Best thing to do, we sell it on a space station. And it will tell us that the shield is down. Now what happens to our regular ship? It will stay here until we get rid of it. So where do we find the space station? Now normally at this part of the game, normally you can't see the space station at all. So here's a little bit of a tip from a person who's been around a while. Go back into your cockpit and you'll notice that on your map you've got some very interesting icons. You obviously know what the round balls are. There are planets, right? Well, you see that this is diamond-shaped icon right there. So in that general area is where the space station is. And you know what? It looks like it's literally right in front of me. So we're going to go straight there. Unless it's on the other side of the planet. It must be. That must be an aberration. It is. So we're going to go back out into space. I'm going to get away from the planet a little bit. Let's zip away from it. and stop and let's go back down and you notice it's in the center of the icon and there it is it's that triangle right there sometimes they're much further out than you than you're used to seeing you may not even be able to pick it up with the naked eye and it's not going to lock onto it so all you can do is get in the general area but when you get close to it it'll sometimes knock you out of orbit the letters C and I are usually in the upright position to get into the, into the station. So this is how you enter. It will orient you anyway. So once it takes over, you don't have to worry about landing. But they always play this wonderful music the first time you're on the space station for the very first time. Like it's some really, really huge achievement. Cool music. and exit. Now, love the music, but I'm going to have to keep going here if we want to sell. So we're going to need to some sell some stuff. I'm going to keep the crowd this. I'm going to go ahead and keep the salvage data if I can. Um, I don't need this. I don't need this. Let's put you up here. Let's put you up here. I want to keep this. I need some space in my inventory here in order to sell this ship. So we're going to sell those three items. And you know what? That S-Class add-on, we're going to go ahead and sell that too. Which way, which way am I? Over on this side of the station, you have dealers. You have a place that you can scrap the ship. We'll come back to that in a moment. You have an appearance modifier, so you can change what your appearance of your character looks like. We'll get to that another time. You have an exosuit upgrade. I advise doing that as soon as you can. The first upgrade is usually, in this case it says purchase inventory slot. I don't believe the first one costs you anything, but it's always a good idea to get it. I always put it in my cargo. If I go back in, see I still have 77,000, so it didn't cost me anything for the very first one. These guys will sell upgrades. Okay, and you can purchase them, but you notice you can also sell. So I can sell this bulk caster module, which I'm going to go ahead and do. It'll give me 476. I'm now up over 900. So I can I can buy one from him if I want. I got thermal protection and thermal protection. What are the difference? This one's obviously for cold, as you can see by the snowflake. This one's for a hot planet. 
So if we get that, it'll give me an added protection against those hot planets I'm on. We also got a shield module and a movement module. Now before I get these protections, I usually would rather go for the movement module. It is so much better to be able to move around better. So let's go ahead and take the movement module. And I'm going to go ahead and install that. Where'd it go? There it is. And there you go. So this gives me a 208% increase on the jetpack tanks. Recharge rate increases by 25%, an initial boost of 7%, and then a sprint recovery time of plus 35%. So it really makes a big difference while you're searching planets and running around. You'll see. So we're keeping all these. We're going to sell these three items on this line. It should give me enough space. This guy sells upgrades for your... Um, it says technology merchant, but this is for your uh, exo crafts, which we don't have yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. This is for your ship that you can get upgrades for. You see these blue cubes, grab them because you'll either get navigation data or nanites. And this finally is for your multi tool, which I would love to be able to buy this. It's a B class, it's got a lot of slots on it, but I guarantee you I don't have anywhere near enough cash to grab it. So we're done. And they sell upgrades for that. So you can sell things in two places. You can either sell them to the pilots that are landing on the station. So you'll see that there's the ship I need to sell. Here's a pilot who lands on the station. These are NPCs. You can sell your products that you got to them. Or you can sell them in that room that we were just at or across the way at the trade terminal. Let's go ahead and sell to this guy. Selling to the guys that are landing on the platform like this does not affect the economy of the system. What? It can affect the economy? Yes, it can. If you have a very large amount of a certain item and you sell it, it could literally drop the economy in a system and make it destitute. So you have to be careful. So it's better to trade with the pilots. Sell and then look through your items to decide what you want to get rid of. I could sell that, but I'm not going to. I'm just making room right now. Vortex cubes. And I don't need the ammunition yet. I do want more uranium. Does he have any? He's got chlorine. That's always a good thing to get. Tritium I need more of. I can get some from asteroids, but I'm going to go ahead and buy it. And nothing really that I want at this time. Thank you. Don't want your ship either. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to keep it there for now, but I should have enough slots available that when I sell this ship, I should be able to get things. I should have uh, the things that uh, come from the ship should get me what I need. You notice my jetpack lasts a lot longer? Very interesting, huh? Okay. Oh, I made more money, right? Yeah. Alright, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and destroy this ship or salvage it, as the case may be. Claim scrap. See, one and a half mil. That's not bad, but it's one and a half million I didn't have before. It wants to be certain. Are you sure you want to do this? The answer is one, yes. And you see I had enough room in my inventory. So what does it give me? It gives me all kinds of stuff in my inventory. Let's take a look at what I got. So it gave me this, 940,000, 520, and 96. And it gave me two of these upgrades, which are useless to me, so I'm going to go ahead and sell them. Now, if you're fortunate enough, you can also end up with a storage augmentation unit for the next ship that you might have. But you notice that if I take a look out here, there's the ship I started with. It just immediately appears in the station. Now I can't scrap that ship because that ship is not available to be scrapped because I have no other ships to return to. There's a nice one for eight million. Wouldn't mind that one. That looks pretty cool. Okay, so I need to sell these items real quick to get the cash out of it. We'll do the same thing again. Trade, sell, sell the spool of nanite cables. They're always going to be in weird spots, I don't know why. Subatomic regulators and recycled circuitry. And now I'm up to 1.6 million. Does he have anything I could like to buy? He has uranium. Very good. Wait a minute. I said buy, right? That's weird. Why does it say 32? Should have been on one. There we go. I will take that. That's for your launch thrusters, so it's very handy to have. Um, don't see anything else I'm interested in at this time. 
So now we're up to a good amount. So I'm going to put this in my starship for now. And everything else can stay with me, except you, you going over in the starship too. And I'll put you up there. There we go. Got some room. Now that's a hauler. Those are expensive. Shuttles. And then my... Let's just call it a ship. Create chromatic metal. I'm not going to look for it in the trade station. Uh, just to show you what's over here real quick before we get to the last section of this. Looks like it's going to turn into an hour episode, folks. So here's the trade terminal. There's all kinds of people walking around that you can introduce yourself to and learn words from and stuff like that. These are all different types of merchants. You can get missions from this guy over here. Um, he's a mission agent and those missions will lend you to sometimes factions and stuff like that but it's not going to let me do that just yet it's not allowing me yet but this fellow over here is handy he's a cartographer what are cartographers map makers so if you want a map somewhere this is the guy to get them from you exchange your navigation data for maps so you have to make sure you have a lot of navigation data before you do it if you exchange for specific ones you can get planetary charts depending upon what you're looking for these are expensive for settlements you can get one for alien cart cart uh, cartographic data that will show you an alien, uh, usually a uh, alien site that has information at it. Um, you have commercial sites, so buildings that you can actually trade at. Emergency, which means crashed ships. You don't always get what you're looking for of this. Sometimes you're going to find abandoned structures instead. And then secret cartographic uh, data, which has to do with military things. You've got to be careful of those. But now you know. And there is a transporter. The teleporter is very handy when you want to get back and forth to your base because you will create your own teleporter at your base. You'll be able to get back and forth to the station fairly quick and easy. All right. Let's go take a look at all the planets that are out here real quick. And I'm going to decide where I'm making my base. We'll land and we'll call it. Okay, so we already know that's a hot planet. Let's get back in the cockpit and see where all our planets are. There's one behind there. I think we know what that one is. There's one over here. Hmm, doesn't look promising. Miasmatic. Okay, that's the planet we started at. That looks cold. We'll scan it. Heimel. Heimel's cold, especially when you see frost crystals. We got two over here, pretty close by to each other, so. Let's get the first one. Radioactive. We got uranium on there, so that's handy to go find that. And then the second one is toxic. Okay, so we're not getting very lucky here. There's one on the other side of this guy. But we do need to land there and get to the ocean real quick. So maybe we'll do that the final episode if we have a few extra minutes. Let's get around this planet real quick and just see the planet on the other side. So it looks like my pulse engine is dropping quite a bit. Time to charge that. Oh, there it is. Let's drop out. Whoa! Okay, I hate when that happens. Okay, what do we got? Hexagonal. Okay, there is literally nothing on this planet. Not worth our time. So why don't we go back to this one? This one's the closest to our section here, to the space station. We'll go back on the other side. And we'll head directly down from where the space station is. It looks like the space station's right there, right? Yes. So let's head to the planet right in this general area. We'll head for the water. All right. Now let's go straight down. I'm going to go back out to my third person view. We're going to look for, I like to find one of those little trading outposts if I can. Because like I said before, they are very handy when you're first starting out in order to look for materials and minerals that you might need in order to build up your bases and stuff like that or add upgrades to your ships to your own person oh, got a house over there and eh, it's out in the water it's probably nothing more than an abandoned location oh that's weird very weird okay Anything else around here? I 
That's selenium. Let's go a little farther this way. Oh, there's apparently something there. It doesn't look like much. Huh. Well, we'll use a little launch fuel, but let's go ahead and launch uh, land. And we're going to use this to find, hopefully, a trade, trading outpost. They're supposed to tell you where the closest one is, but there's always been a glitch where it just shows you a random one, which could be miles away. Minor settlement, that's what we need. Um, I don't think it pointed us in the right direction. Here we go. 17 hours, the other side of the planet. That's what I thought. Okay. That's the weirdest noise I've ever heard in this game. Okay, one hour of flight time. So we won't be pointing at the space station, but you know what? We know where there's a minor, set minor settlement, so this will be a good place to start our base, and we'll get this thing finished. Okay, we're in space. Lock on it. Pulse. Five, four, three, two, one, and entry. And here we go. Looks like we might have ocean out there. I don't know. I do want to get to the ocean and try to find the last three creatures so I can show you that. So I'm going to start with the refiner. We're going to make the base. There we go. Slow it down a little bit. Yeah, there's not much out here. But you know what? It gives me a free landing pad. There we go. So let's exit this. We're going to create it over here. I always like to do it by the side door. So let's place this sucker down real quick. We need fuel. And here's the copper. I'm not going to do it all right now. So we're going to make enough. It's always going to be a pain in the neck. I don't want to. What will happen is if there's 201 in there, and it starts making the chromatic metal, it'll literally use up all 201, but you'll only get the 100 chromatic metal. I don't know why it does that. All right, we're already over 50. I'm going to go ahead and take it. Just let it keep going the rest of the way. Now it's time to create our base computer. So the base, whoops. Yeah, I do that from time to time. Wrong button base computer I'm just gonna plop down right over here I'm gonna orient it so it's just changing you use your mouse wheel to do that because it always turns after it opens so now I have it facing forward see searching cartographic data universal archive search reveals no prior claims to the site sonar test confirms site is suitable for construction claim the site claim it and you get the wonderful pullback there's literally no water around me. That's okay. We'll fly to some real quick here in just a moment. So we'll come back here and save it, but I'm not going to do anything with it just yet. Let's pick this up because it's going to ask us to create a base that is actually build one. We'll do that in the next episode. So we have a base here. The good news is I can come back here anytime I want. So let's go out into space real quick. We'll take a look at the planet down below. We'll look for some water, and I'm going to see if I can't find those three last creatures real fast. Here, let's pulse out just to get us a little further out from the planet. Eh. Okay. Sorry, hope I'm not making any of you sick. Looks like there's water right there. I'm used to seeing what I'm looking for, so excuse me. Now, even in the 
remotest water areas like this, you're going to usually find an island or two. Slow it down, come in low and slow. And land. Out. Okay, jump in the water. Dive down just a little bit. Hit the F and look. And creatures will start appearing. There's some. So there's our number, what, 12? Okay. Should be two more. There's one. There we go. Could have watched your oxygen levels. That's two. We need one more. And there they are. Son of a gun. I'm going to get this pretty easily. Biological entity. Three. We got them all. Let's get out. 14 of 14 species. So what do we get for this? Wrong button. Discoveries. 14 of 14. We get 3,500 nanites for finding all 14 species, folks. And we get an achievement beyond that. So that's great. So here we go. Look at that. Almost 4,000 now. Now I can get some decent stuff. Now some folks will tell you to farm other things. It's good to do uh, later in the game to do some easy farming. And that's uh, sentinels are a good way to do that. But I'm telling you, if early in the game, if you can discover all the species on the planet that you're on to start with, you're going to get some quick buck as far as nanites are concerned. Great way to go. So excellent job there. Um, we might rename the planet too. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our base, and we'll save the game. Uh, you'll see that it's pointing me in that direction, but we've got to go back out into space. It'd be easier. It's going to tell us about the achievement we just got. Naturalist. All species on one planet. Now, mind you, I've gotten a lot of these achievements, and I'll show you that later. But there is my base computer archives. If you stay in the upper atmosphere a little longer, you'll fly faster, and then you can come down. You'll learn those tricks later on, too. All right. I want to thank you all for joining me today, too. For anybody who's watched this video, thank you very much. Again, leave whatever comments you got. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully I sound okay. Uh, in my own eyes, I guess I'm sounding all right, but still a little sore in the mouth right now. There we go, and our restore point is saved. So next thing is that we're going to go ahead and start creating our mini base here. We're going to get things moving along as far as that's concerned, and we're going to start doing a little more exploring. It's going to ask me to start looking for more buried technology as well. And I'll show you some of the main base components I always throw in my base in order to get it going. Uh, but for now, this is where we're going to leave off. Thank you very much. Again, throw a like on there. I'd appreciate it, and thank you for watching.